also on that card, um, we've got Uriah Hall taking on uh, Paolo Costa or Paolo Borrachino. Um, it, it's it's a bit of a crazy fight, like mm -hmm. given what happened to Uriah um, back when you were supposed to fight Vitor Belfort, that wasn't that long ago. Was there any kind of concern for you, kind of being uh, not only in his corner but in the camp, like with him just taking this fight so quickly after all that happened? I was surprised. Yeah, I didn't expect to be um, fighting so soon. Um, I, I was there for the whole camp with Vitor. Um, I was there when he collapsed. Uh, I really didn't expect us to be fighting this soon, but what it looks like to me with, with all the medicals and everything that came back that, that he's going to be fine. Uh, I, I literally have never seen anything like that. You know, we had a, we had a pound to go and, and the poor guy collapsed walking down to the elevator. So I don't know what happened or hopefully it, it was fixed. Hopefully it's something that won't, won't rear its head again. But to be thrown back in so soon, I was surprised, but I'm glad we are going to fight. It's one of those things like, hey, let's get back on the horse and let's go. Sure. The longer you, th longer I think you, you sit around and wait, the more doubt you start putting in your mind. Like you just saying that you were there present when it all happened, like, or like, I mean, take me through kind of your mentality when this happens to your fighter. I'm sure you're ridiculously concerned and what. Yeah, man, it it was awful. Like, uh, it was just one of those situations where, um, medically, I, I I just thought, okay, we need to make sure that we get we get the best doctors available right now, mm -hmm. get the paramedics up here. The the fight in my mind was was already out the yeah. window. Like, it, it was making sure this guy was going to get out of this alive. And I've, I've never seen anything like it. We had a pound to go with an hour left. We had no problems whatsoever. Uh, he cut the weight and I just said, hey, don't even worry about stepping on the scale. We're gonna walk down and we're gonna be on, on weight. So we got out of the tub, we dried off, we gave him a minute, we had plenty of time to go, got suited up, literally walking down the hallway and the elevator doors open and that's when he collapsed. So wow. it, it ended up being quite a scene. There was a lot of people around because everybody was gonna be going down to do their face offs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was just it was it was it was an awful situation to see yeah. in, in one of my best friends, and you're kind of sitting there thinking, man, like, what if this is it? Like, if this guy doesn't make it, he didn't really have a pulse. When he felt for a pulse, it was kind of thready. You know, it was it was an awful situation. He wasn't responsive to anyone. Uh, the paramedics came; they dropped IVs in him. So it was it was a it was a traumatic experience to see. Sure. You know, he was in and out of consciousness for the first four hours. So, but yeah, I'm just glad after everything was all said and done that we, we, he was okay. Yeah, I mean, it was great to hear that he's now kind of well again, he's fighting back to fighting, but in the kind of immediate aftermath, like, there are some things said by Dana White and said yeah. by other people in the UFC which weren't so, uh, I guess, sympathetic about right. the situation, right? And how did that kind of make you feel as a coach, like seeing, as you were just saying, one of your friends going through something pretty yeah. dramatic? Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard because I understand, I understand both sides. Yeah. You know, I, I get that there we were the co-main event, um, I get that this was supposed to be Vitor's retirement fight and all of these things and there was probably a lot of money riding on on this fight and, and for, for the company and how much they missed out on so being upset about it I can understand on the flip side of that you know the whole time and being with Uriah all he kept saying was I've never missed weight you know there was never there was never a doubt in his mind there was never a part of him saying I need to quit that never came up quitting never came up and I've seen numerous fighters have plenty of time to cut the weight and they quit. They say, oh, I don't want to do it, I'm not going to make it, I'm just going to quit. And this guy didn't want to quit, said he's a professional, he's never missed weight, and that's all he kept telling himself every time he got in the tub. Talking to himself, I've never missed weight, I've never missed weight. So, so to see both sides and to see firsthand of this, this guy working for a company who doesn't want to fail them, doesn't want to let them down, who damn near died for the company. Sure. So, it, it, it sucks and I just I wish that um, you know you, you you praise in public and you and you yell at them behind closed doors sure. in, in my opinion so yeah. you know I, I understand both sides but I, I think if I was Dana I would, I would wait a little while and maybe pull him aside and talk to him sure like and I guess the wake up coming up against Paulo Costa um, is there anything you're gonna do differently on this time around you know so in the last camp that that Uriah had he was having a lot of stomach issues through the whole camp yeah. and we and we spoke about it I, I think he actually talked about it in some of the interviews yeah, prior to the weight yeah. cut having these stomach issues or digestion issues um, so I'm not in charge of his diet by any means but I'll always overlook and kind of see what, what's going on or how does he feel and in the beginning of the camp all he was eating was fish and he was having a hard time digesting 
interesting. So we switched a lot of that up and put him back on some turkey and put him back on some lean meats and yep. things like that. And he started to feel a lot better. So I don't know if there was some change within his body or his chemistry during that time, but um, we have the PI, we have guys there that are able to help him. And I've told him, look, these, this is what they're there for, use their services. So hopefully he adheres to that advice and, and we're not gonna have any problems. The other thing, I would like to see him not so muscular. Sure. He was very muscular that last fight. And uh, that could have that could have played into it. Yeah, I mean, this is a very big fight for him coming out. Absolutely. Like, um, like when you look at Boricina, undefeated, like you know, demolishing people. Right. Um, he's a very formidable opponent. Like, mm -hmm. um, how how do you think these two kind of match up? Like, where do you think the keys for this fight are? Well, I mean, this guy's a buzzsaw. Yeah. You know, he's just been running through people and he's been putting people away. And he's the type of fighter that the UFC wants wants to see keep winning. You know, and for Uriah, I think it's going to be a lot about precision. You know, landing your strikes with precise and moving and not staying in the center uh, and letting this guy dictate the pace to move you backwards. That's where he has a lot of his success. So for us, is, is almost leading the dance, mm -hmm. making sure that you're the one striking and getting off on angles, not letting this guy come forward and move forward without without making him pay. Mm -hmm. You know, so stylistically, I'm, I'm excited for this fight. Uh, I mean, we got, a, we got a tall task ahead of us. This guy's a stud, and I'm looking forward to it.